Greetings ladies and mentalgents and welcome to today's reddit quickie video taken from the HFY subreddit called Teddy Bear written by Lostfall. The link to the original will be down below and as always I hope that you enjoy. Norale sat staring at his senses not quite believing what he was seeing. As he ran his long fingers over the smooth skin of his head his pupilless eyes looked in disbelief. His race, the observers, were an ancient space-faring race. They traveled the galaxy watching the younger races and monitoring their progress. His naked eyes could pick up the energy halos pulsing off this object. They were immense. Almost like a radiation coming off a sun, but this was electrical fields, not even shield systems lit as large of a region as this construction did. Long-term life should have been impossible on the system with no habitable planets. This system was a graveyard, a war between two powerful races left all the planets little more than chunks of rock, ore, and ice. Remnants of those lost ships forming into a ring of ruined wrecks floating around the system. Nothing should have been able to survive here amongst the asteroids and wrecks. Yet life was still settling up in front of him. He ran scans, fearing the race's natural ability to see the energy was failing him. He was in a system doing a routine observation mission. Almost immediately upon entering it, though, he had noticed something strange. The energy field of the asteroid belt had appeared since his last visit. At first, his eyes had been stung by the bright glow, almost like a small sun. But it dimmed, and what it looked like a wrecked ship was at the center of the pulsating field. He could see him moving around, and the lights were on, and it was rotating with a high speed for something habitable, almost like a station for high-gravity species. His scans indicated a life aboard that ship, but he couldn't see how. As he sat in his single-seat vessel, he debated if he should try and contact this mysterious ship. No sane race he could think of would set up so close to an asteroid belt in the contraption like this nor had he ever seen such energy come from an artificial construction. As he was starting to reach out to his communicator, it shocked him as it sprang to life. They had seen his small observation ship. This was impossible, though, he thought. He had some of the best cloaking technology in the galaxy in that ship. He felt his skin flush as he knew it was dark grey and apprehension. He went ahead and opened up the frequency. Immediately, his view of the system shifted to that of a mammalian creature. It had long hair coming from its head and a face, but wore a protective suit that had visible patches on it, even though worn as it was functional. His lines of the creature's face left the impression of carved stone more than flesh. Norle, surprised at its appearance, listened as it began to talk. He could see the ship's computer trying to figure out what it was trying to say. Evening, why are you hovering so close to my home? Not planning on raiding me, are you? The voice drew out a long, standard galactic words in a unique way, almost sounding as though he was speaking slow. Norale swallowed hard. The ship's computer had settled on human. He had, of course, heard of them. They had fascinated the observers since they were first noticed. Their home planet was a high-gravity world, giving them strength. He seemed to remember there was an omnivorous diet gave them the height as well, but he had never actually met one before. Hello, I'm Norale, the observer, and was curious about what I'm seeing. Your ship looks like it's taken some damage. Do you need help? Norale decided the prudent thing was to be polite as possible. Humans had a fierce reputation. They had been expanding on the galactic scene ever since they shot down those four raiders. The raiders had never expected that they would end up being reverse engineered. Humanity used what they learned to explode out into the system. Unlike most races, though, they didn't leave their planet in any single coordinated effort. It started as an uncoordinated departure from a dozen or so places around their homeworld. Then, to everyone's amazement, the space rush was on. Humans streamed from the planet in a way no other race had before them. The humans themselves didn't even try to control the dispersal of the population. The observers had already been discussing this phenomenon. Humans seemed to pop up out of nowhere on every uninhabited planet that they found. Other non-unified species had made it to space, 
For most, they moved in groups. Humans tended to scatter when placed in their colonies. Almost no logic appeared, and while some failed, most were quite successful. I think it's all as well here, but you're welcome to dock if you like. Been a while since I've had any visitors to talk to. The man mumbled. He appeared distracted. Given that Norale's job was to explore and report odd things he found, so that they could be documented in his race's archives, he felt some sense of obligation to go aboard, if for no other reason than to report what the human was doing. As his ship approached, he started having a serious reconsiderations. This was not a station, but a part of a great warship that the humans had converted into a station. The warship appeared to be Korotek in design, least most of it was. Other observers had said humans called the Korotek ships the Enterprise. This name came from the resemblance to a fictional human show. The warship was missing most of its original lower and rear decks, damage likely left over from the Korotek's war with the Tkta. The patchwork welding and wiring seemed to cover the exterior. In places, he saw odd constructions, like circles of metal wrapped in wires. These thrummed with energy as he looked at them, each almost too right to look at. As he approached, he realized that some parts of the construction were chucked out or so. He also found a docking arm, despite the fact that it was on the wrong side of the ship. What looked like some form of a small, overbuilt ship hung from it. Whereas his ship's design was graceful and sleek, this one was a polar opposite. The small ship was overbuilt, as though designed to survive the atmosphere reinsertion. It was blocky and sturdy. His ship computer could not classify the ship or its capabilities. He pulled up and extended a docking arm, in which was from the Chukta capital ship. As he docked, he heard the shush of the air equalizing. The system was airtight and functional and a quick check told him that the atmosphere was breathable, so he opened up the ship's port and ventured out into the construction. His skin paled with apprehension of what he would find. As soon as he entered the station, he was hit by the gravity. The construction spin was generating more than his species could find comfortable. He wasn't even in the outer rings, but it was almost overwhelming. As he looked around, he could see cables thicker than his arm. These seemed to run everywhere pulsing with halos of energy. He couldn't begin to imagine what could use that much energy around this monstrosity. For not the first time, he began to wonder how such a thing could generate so much energy. He was also surprised to find that the hall that he was in had many of the same weld and patch marks covering it. Again, a mixture of technology with some parts of Chukta and Koyotek ships. Others were not easy to identify. A small robot of some sort shot by him as he walked into the hallway. The creation had no cover and the wires everywhere. It was busy decontaminating and cleaning everything it found. Norale's misgivings about coming aboard were starting to grow. For lack of a better description, he was in a station, but it was a station made from salvage, and housing a race that shouldn't be able to live here. Curiosity drove him onwards, though, as he walked down the corridor. He felt and heard the airlocks opening ahead of him and closing behind him. At least he took some safety procedures, though this many airlocks seemed extreme. The gravity at this point was crushing, but he was nearing the outer edge of the station. He finally found a large room. This door had opened out onto the upper decks. One entire side of the room was open to the surrounding space, only a shielding keeping the atmosphere in. With relief, he noticed signs of an airlock here, too. He could smell the metallic tang of ozone. It complemented the thin coat of metal dust and grease that covered everything. This was a workshop or a laboratory of some sort, and at the center of it, the head covered human. In person, the human was much larger than he had expected, more than twice his height. Its head was roughly the same size with smaller eyes. The body was large enough with a heavy, dense bald, and the eyes had apparatus that focused its vision. The human didn't seem to notice Norale's entrance, focusing on the object before him. Norale immediately struck by the energy radiating off the human. All other races the observers had ever noticed absorbed energy. Most creatures' bodies only drew enough for nutrition to supply their immediate needs. Anything more was inefficient. 
He was trying to remember what type of world the humans had come from. He remembered it was extreme, but to his race, these humans would glow in the dark. It was a sign of danger in most worlds that the observers had studied. Norlay jumped as he heard, You're just gonna stand around and gawking. Then, with a momentary pause, the human fixed his look on Norlay with a wry smile. Wait, your kind is called the observers. Forget it, I asked that. Come on in. Sir, what are you looking for? Trade? Around the room were many tables, tools of all types, to cover them along with the bits of unidentifiable projects. There were also displays everywhere, with various schematics or images on them. I was curious. This system is a dead system, as I passed through. I couldn't help but notice your station. Mind if I ask what model it is? As the human started to laugh, still working with the device in front of him, it's called Model Jack. I am Jack Terman. I built it. Nora Lair could feel his skin shift in color and confusion. Stations were extreme efforts from all races. A sole individual building one couldn't be possible. The door on the opposite side of the station opened up and a female human walked in. She was exposing her teeth. She put up a cup of steaming liquid down next to Jack. Looking up to Nora Lay, My name is Sarah Terman. Don't mind Jack's manner. He's a teddy bear. Nora Lay was not sure what a teddy bear was, but didn't want to ask. As he had already noticed how easy both humans managed to move in the side gravity. It was clear that humans were powerful. It is a pleasure to meet you. I am Nora Lay of the Observers. I was passing through the system when I noticed your station. Norlay felt his skin tighten in amazement at the blast of energy that came off the female human at this. Oh, it's wonderful, isn't it? Jack built it with the help of us and our neighbors. Norlay was still marveling at how the aurora of energy around the humans seemed to fluctuate, as though their moods could change it. Remembering to be as polite as possible, mind if I ask what type of station this is? I'm having a tough time classifying it. Even as he said that he saw the drones coming in from the asteroids, as they dropped off their loads, he realized that they were also coming from the wrecked ships. A constant stream of them came through, dropping their loads off in the bins along the one wall. He could see the blast and heat each time something dropped off into the orbin, and he was shocked to realize that they were processing it immediately. It's our home, Jack called out without turning around. Honey, be nice, Sarah rebuked. Jack is right, this is our home, but it is also where he does his research and inventions. Jack is not much of a people person. Jack huffed behind her as his aurora grew a bit. But is amazing with xenotechnology. He developed the station to also serve as a power hub for the surrounding colony. It also serves as a protection against raids. Lately, we have been upgrading it. We are trying to give us more processing and manufacturing capabilities. Nora Lair realized what he had missed before in his shock. Sarah had said neighbors, and now colony. What colony? Nora Lair asked, his skin growing moist at his fear. How could he have missed something so important during his scan of the system? Why the mining colony? There's over 10,000 people living in the asteroid near the station. They mine the surrounding ones and scavenge technology from the wrecked ships. They even have farming get up inside a couple of the larger asteroids. There are enough ice asteroids for us to get ample water, Sarah explained. Nora Lair's focus had shifted when Jack moved, his attention immediately drawn to what Jack was working on. It was a Coatec planet cracker, one of the most powerful weapons in the galaxy. Nora Lair's color shifted as panic flowed through his many small hearts. He froze, torn between running for his ship and fear of sudden movement. His skin was now pale in fright. Sarah noticed what he was staring at. Oh, don't you worry about that. He's just converting it into a generator. It is amazing that the amount of energy these hold, they make great power sources. Norale looked at her and Jack in disbelief. He could see the energy radiating off the device. Most races completely avoided systems if they knew any of these bombs were there. The source of the station's power was now made sense. How are, well, do you have many of these that you have converted? Sarah let out another laugh and showed her teeth, a smile that he would later learn. Nora Lair had figured out that this was a species way of showing humor. Of course, we use at least 10 in the station to power everything. 
there are extra units to supply the power to the miners and power to our defensive systems. The sun here is too weak for solar to be much help. But look at all the resources around here. Norale was quiet for a minute. It was coming together now. Unlike other races that built specialized stations, the human station was a hub that served many purposes. One of those was a power plant made from some of the most dangerous bombs known. His skin was turning darker gray as his curiosity began to override his fear. Not sure if he wanted to ask it, but he felt that he had to. How do you get power to the asteroids? That's easy, Jack replied. His focus was so complete, his tone so emotionless, that as he continued to work. The shield technology we found on the scrap was all we needed to build our transmitters. We used electrical transmission similar to the old Tesla coils, but without unintending arcing. We found in those derelicts more efficient ways to generate a large electrical field. The receivers are then installed in anything that we want to charge. Ah, done! Jack announced with pride as he stepped back. To Norale, the device looked like a bomb, but he saw terminals on it now. His mind was spinning, how could these creatures not only survive, but thrive at here? How long had they been here, and how had they avoided detection until now? The questions were racing through his mind. As Jack turned around looking at Norale, those questions came to an abrupt stop. He instinctively felt the fear and prey species facing a predator. This large, dense creature was regarding him with a look that concerned him. Now Norale, right? If you don't mind, I'd like to know why you observe my home. Norale didn't expect this question. His race was the observers. It was what they did. They observed and recorded a little more than the historians and librarians of the galaxy. That is what my race does. We observe others and learn, he started. He could tell the human was suspicious. His aurora was changing colors. That confirmed that the moods impacted the aurora. We are a peaceful race, he was quick to add. Jack seemed to regard him once more. Then he shook his head. Well, guess the old stories about greys are true then. You share what you observe with others. Jack's aurora was shifting hue again, almost seeming to be excitement. We have used it to trade with before, but we generally store it. May I ask, how did your engineers create designs for parts that they'd never seen? Norale asked. He was still fascinated by the blending and cobbling of equipment. Jack picked up a cup of coffee and took a sip. Norale could see the steam coming off the liquid, the energy radiating from the surface indicating the temperature. And from what he saw, it was high enough that it could cause severe injury. Yet this human was drinking it as though it had no effect. They didn't. Out here, you have to be a bit of a DIYer. DIYer? What does that mean? Norale asked. Do it yourself. You take what you have and figure out how to make it what you want, Jack replied. Norale found himself pondering this. He was standing in the middle of a power plant and home. They were using weapons as generators and broadcasting it. And they had an unknown number of homes hidden in the asteroids around them that he'd failed to find scanning. This was a flourishing human colony not dependent on shipments from the supporting worlds. He started to realize that these people were independent. They didn't rely on a world to send them. They left it to seek space. Do be polite, Jack. We haven't had guests in a while, chided Sarah. Jack picked up the device from the table. It had a strange assortment of parts. Some were humans, but other pieces were copies of the Koatek and Chukvang devices. As he installed some parts from the nearby workbench, Norale watched as soon as the receiver went in. He stared, amazed. The energy was flowing into it from the area around the station. Its battery was charging as it sat on the bench. What are you achieving here is amazing, but I have to ask, why? Why did you pick the broken system to build your home? Norale was more fascinated than ever. Seemed like a good place when we got you. You've got asteroids of any type that you could want and scrap technology floating around. No one seems to mind us being here, and outside of the occasional pirate raid, little to worry about. Sarah replied, she described this dead system as though it was a fertile land to grow plants on. You said you had raids, Aule decided to change the line of questions. He was still struggling to understand why they would go unprepared. The humans didn't even seem to have support. They were that confident that they could do it themselves. 
Jack started to laugh. Sure have. Wanna watch the last one? Before Nora Lair could respond, Jack already activated the view screen next to him. Immediately, Nora Lair realized that these weren't pirates, but the Chirotek were all fleet. He watched as they began to approach in an attack formation. As the first ship fired off the first shot, the flash of lights came off the station, and he was thankful that this was a recording as it was powerful enough to have blinded any of his kind that had seen it. With that, all of the nearby asteroids seemed to light up, and to Norale's shock, so did the scrap warships. The energy bolts that the church had fired seemed to only feed into the radiating electrical field. The battle was over almost as fast as it had begun. The Chertek ships likely never saw the relics come online. The graveyard was alive and firing upon the approaching ships. Asteroids had also been moving to intercept courses. The Chertek fleet was completely destroyed. It was the fastest space battle Norle had ever seen, and it didn't even last a minute. He looked back at the humans' horror, I'm making his skin pale and cold again. Well, if you'll excuse me, I think I've taken up enough of your time, Norle said. He wanted to get away. Most species would have killed an observer who had seen too much. These humans were insane. Though they made no threats, to his surprise, they didn't even seem to mind him leaving. They had even invited him back. With all that he had learned, uh, they didn't consider what they did unique to worry about him being a threat. As he reached his ship, he noticed that his ship was fully recharged. The human's field had recharged the battery of his ship. It was like he had never departed from his observation mission. The humans had been kind and offered to trade or even given him some of his provisions. They even suggested trading goods for knowledge. He had given them a star map of the surrounding systems with notes of what was there. Norle didn't see how any harm could come from that. Looking at the scrap field, he now realized that it was larger than it was the first time he scanned the system years ago. He recognized pieces of several of the ships floating from the recording. He also started to identify many newer ships in the debris field. As he approached the edge of the system, he looked back. It was time to see the energy field around the small station expand far enough to cover the scrapyard. Drones began moving again all over the asteroids and ships. As he prepared to warp, he sent a note to his superiors detailing what had happened. He marked the system down as human-controlled also. And at the end he wrote, I suggest we establish a trade and normal relations with the DIY cost of humanity. We must watch the species closer, as they are more capable than initial reports indicate. For such a young race, they will leave a mark on this galaxy. With that note off, we searched for the archives of a teddy bear. He learned that it was a stuffed toy resembling a bear humans give their children. So he searched for bear, and the videos he got back left him even more afraid of Jack and humanity. As the ship jumped away, Jack and Sarah uploaded the system map to humanity's galactic network, the same place they found their DIY instructions. Settlers throughout the race studied it, looking for that perfect opportunity. And that, my friends, is the end of this Reddit quickie. I hope that you enjoyed. If you'd like to support this channel, there are numerous ways to do so, listed in the description down below. The easiest and best way would be to share this video and my channel as much as possible. I'll see you all in the next video and I hope that you have a good one until then. Cheers.